Today's video is another one of those David's thoughts while showering kind of video ideas. What happens when you remove the fans off an all-in-one liquid cooler? Will you be able to game for any extended period of time, or is it going to lead to the creation of yet-to-be-discovered elements? But before we get into that, we have a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by DataCap, which is a brilliant way to learn some new data analysis skills. DataCap has over 300 interactive courses that use an XP leveling system that makes you feel smarter than you really are. One of the courses that I started out with was an introduction to data analysis using Python. And even though I am really bad at this kind of thing and have no background with this, it was pretty easy to pick up what I had to do. What's also cool is that all of the lessons are bite-sized and they have a mobile version of the app, which means you can learn on the go. A data camp subscription starts at only $25 a month for unlimited access to all of their courses. So use the link in my description below so that you can try out the first chapter of any of the courses for free to see if you like it. Thank you very much again, DataCamp, for sponsoring this video. Now I feel like an all-in-one liquid cooler should work quite well passively because it's got so much surface area for radiating heat. And when it comes to tower coolers, Passive options do exist. That is something that works for people who don't want noise in their system and don't mind a casual house fire every time they switch on their PC. There is one problem with using an AIO passively though, and it's the fact that it has a pump in it, which means that even if you remove the fans, there is still a moving part that facilitates cooling. But we're gonna ignore that for today. We don't get bogged down by technicalities like that on this channel. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with a control test, which is gonna be a 240 millimeter AIO with two Noctua NFA 12s on it. And then we're gonna remove the fans and see what happens. And to top it all off, we're gonna use Use this overcompensator Matron 9000 360 millimeter radiator AIO to see what the best case scenario looks like. Now, as far as the CPU goes that we're going to try and passively cool with an all-in-one liquid cooler, I'm going to use a Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a 6-core 12-thread CPU. And that's actually not that difficult a CPU for this test, and that's kind of by design. I didn't want anything to just spontaneously combust immediately. I wanted there to be a relatively good chance that this may actually work. And then as far as the rest of the system goes, we've got 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz. To switch things up a little bit, the graphics graphics card that we're using today is this AMD RX 5700 XT and it's actually the reference board which it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good looking cooler. Now when it comes to the all-in-one liquid coolers that I'm going to use for today's tests the 240 millimeter AIO is an NZXT Kraken Z53 which I've been using for a while on the channel especially with this Ryzen 5 5600X and it works very well. For the control test I'm going to use two Noctua NFA 12s which are really good fans, so I think it's going to give us a, 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 a good baseline for performance. At this point, the fans will come off and we'll see if fire happens, and then after that, finally, we'll drop in the overcompensator Matron 9000. One last thing before we get into the test, I'm actually going to test this whole situation while gaming, because I want to see if you can game with a passively cooled AIO, not if you can run IDA64 with a passively cooled AIO. And then the game that we're using is going to be Battlefield 5. I really like Battlefield 5 for these kinds of tests because it stresses your system very evenly. It's not just like 10% CPU utilization at 100% GPU utilization. It's, it's very even utilization, which means the CPU is going to be putting in some work. So with that, let's have a look at the baseline reading. Here is our baseline result. After half an hour of playing Battlefield 5, the temperature is stabilized at about 56 degrees Celsius. And then the average boost frequency fluctuates between 4.5 and 4.6 gigahertz. With that, let's rip off those fans and spank that little 5600X. Okay, uh, so launching into the PC, we've got no fans on the radiator. Let's see what happens when we're just on the desktop. So with very little utilization, we're sitting at about 50 degrees Celsius at the moment, uh, which is not great. We're already close to the peak we were getting after about 30 minutes of gaming before. So 
That's not ideal. But let's see what happens when we fire up, uh, when we fire up Battlefield 5. I mean, this is already going way better than I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was expecting it to just immediately catch on fire. So we're loading back to the game and we're at 67C. And you can see the boost frequencies are steadily dropping. So yeah, we're losing speed here. Temperatures are climbing and if you touch the radiator, it's getting, it's getting real hot. We're about 16 minutes worth of just full activity in and it's doing okay. At 22 minutes in, we're sitting at 79 degrees Celsius and about 90 degrees Celsius on the actual AIO's thermometer. Um, yeah, it's struggling real hard. The radiator is getting worryingly hot. I don't know how long we're still gonna be able to game for before this all comes tumbling down. The boost frequencies are slowly creeping down, but we still occasionally get 4.4 gigahertz on cores here and there. So yeah, the performance is still very similar. This is actually crazy. We've been gaming for 40 minutes and it's not caught on fire yet. Okay, so we just hit an hour in and I'm starting to lose interest. So the boost frequencies are still 4.4 on the fastest cores. The frame rates are still pretty much the same and nothing's been dropping. So an hour in, I feel like this is about time to, to just throw in the towel here. I don't care anymore. It's worked. It's very impressive. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised at how well it's worked. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to drop in the uh, 360 millimeter AIO to see if that does any better. Maybe we can stabilize at a lower temperature and get higher core frequencies and stuff. Okay, so we're at about 11 minutes and we're only at 68C, which is pretty good. And we're still getting 4.4 uh, to 4.5 over most of the cores. So yeah, the 360 millimeter rad is actually holding up very well. Uh, let's see if it kind of tops out at a lower temperature than the 240 did. We've just gone over half an hour in and we're still sitting at 72C with 4.4 gigahertz on most of the cores. So yeah, this, this 360 millimeter rad is really tanking the whole passive thing. And we're over an hour again, and this time we've stabilized at 71 to 72 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good. We've got roughly 4.4 gigahertz on all of the cores. It does fluctuate a bit, but look at that. We've had none of the stuttering that we had with the 240 millimeter variant. This 360 mil AIO has taken it like a complete champ. In conclusion, that went a lot better than I thought it was going to. I knew it was going to take a bit of time for the AIOs to thermally saturate because all of the water needs to heat up and whatever. But even with the 240 millimeter AIO, that 5600X wasn't throttling that much and you were still getting a very playable gaming experience. There was the occasional stutter, but it really wasn't that bad. And then finally, when moving up to the overcompensator Metron, that was sitting steady at 72C. That's actually not that bad. And the gaming performance didn't feel any different than it did with fans on the radiator. So yeah, passively cooled AIOs work way better than you'd think, apparently. So clearly, if both of the fans on your AIO die at exactly the same time, it's not gonna be that bad. In fact, you may not immediately notice because you'll just keep gaming for a couple hours before anything happens. Uh, yeah, so with that, thank you very much for watching another Pointless video. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow stuff linked in the description below, and until the next video, bye-bye.